Okay, it is October 20th, 2022, and uh, I want to talk about, I guess you could say the British Columbia Canada healthcare system when it relates to children that are, uh, I don't want to say damaged, <clears throat> but yeah, basically damaged with uh, their bodies and minds, okay? In Amari's case, he was injured at the time of his birth, which created severe cerebral palsy. For other children, sometimes they're born with... Uh, genetic defects and that kind of thing okay but at the end of the day they're all damaged children which puts them into a position of being vulnerable and easy to exploit okay all right now this is going to be somewhat of a sensitive subject because I don't you know I Okay, these are the issues that I have. <laughs> right? Now, I'm going to take it back to when Andre was wrongfully, quote-unquote, a.k.a. illegally apprehended from his home. Although he was taken out of a daycare. That's how they did it. Through deceit. Okay? And when he went into foster care, he was 28 months old. He was just coming into his language skills. And we were in the process of starting to potty train him. Okay? Now, Andre never had diaper rashes to any degree where it was requiring medical attention. Right? But for whatever reason, as soon as Andre went into foster care at 28 months old, within three weeks, I had to call the RCMP to do a wellness check on my grandson because I was informed by Sierra, who had a visit with him in one of their visiting centers, that his private parts were beat red and that there was something wrong with him and I said well you gotta be kidding me so I just called in the cops to go check being that the foster care parent had Andre for three weeks and obviously didn't do it so anyway they came back said that MCFD was you know having the foster parent take Andre to a doctor Okay, we're not talking about a beet red butt here. We're talking about a beet red penis. Okay, this is what we're talking about. At 28 months old, after three weeks of being illegally and wrongfully apprehended from his home, from his family. Then we get back that he picked up some kind of, there's a name for it, because he's uncircumcised, right? And the doctor prescribed a medication and a procedure, and everything was fine. Now, we didn't get the full details of what the procedure was or anything. We were just told that it was dealt with, that he was taken to a doctor, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> now, 15 months later, Andre comes home. Okay. Okay. And then my lawyer ends up giving me paperwork that related to that situation. And through that paperwork, I got to read some of the ministry files, I guess. I guess that's what I was reading. The ministry files. In relation to um, the foster caregiver and the various 
situations, not all of them, just some of them, where there was communication between the foster care parent and the social worker. Okay. Oh, reading, reading, reading. This is where I learned where Andre was prescribed a medication. I have to go back and reread and double check just to get the exact numbers right, but basically it was being used for 15 months straight with a Q-tip at the end of the penis to go around to um, prevent whatever from, I guess, reoccurring again. It starts with a P, right? But at the same time, <clears throat> the doctor ordered the foster care giver to pull down the foreskin while she was doing this. I don't know if it was daily, but it was for a 15 month period. Okay? I, like I said, I'd have to double check. It, like it never stopped. This is what I'm trying to say. It never stopped. Whether it was five days, seven days a week, whether it was four times, uh, whether it was um, like three times a week, or whether it was for a week straight and then one week not, and then for another week. The point is, is it went on for 15. 15 months people so by the time Andre came home and I gave him a bath and I went to clean him but without really you know touching right you know I mean it was as plain as day that his foreskin pulled all the way down the shaft of his penis which was abnormal for his age and the only way that could have happened was if somebody else was doing it for him, to which it was the foster caregiver. To which, honestly, people, the more I look back and the more I think back, I'm starting to think that individual was a transvestite. Honest to God, I swear. I swear. A fat one at that. Okay? Anyway... I was choked to learn what happened to Andre while in foster care and to this day I'll never figure out how the hell whatever it was that he got that turned his little private part into a beat basically I don't know how he developed that in a three week period under MCFD care and then to have a doctor say here do this for a, the whole time you got him no matter what the psychological damage is or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, okay. He's home. I don't go out of my way to carry on that practice, people. You know? I encourage Andre to try and clean himself, but it wasn't anything that I was trying to pick up on. Okay? So basically, within a couple of months, his penis fused itself back to its original state, although I'm sure there's nerve damage underneath the foreskin because it fused itself back after not being manipulated by an outside source. Right? So whatever they were doing for 15 months didn't work. Because every now and then, because it's a foreskin that's not circumcised, it will develop, there's a name for it, <laughs> right? And when that happened for Andre, I ended up taking him to the doctor. The doctor prescribed a little bit of a cortisol cream. Same routine, just put a little bit around the tip, just slightly underneath it. You don't start pulling it down and you don't do none of that shit. You just do a little bit, right? And, you know, he does it for himself. I never really had to do it, but, and this, I still have the original container, and Andre's 12 now, and I got him back when he was, what, three and a bit? So, you know, like, this is what I mean, okay? This is, this is, this is my experience with, uh, shit, okay? Because to me, I don't, uh, I don't, I will never get over it, people.
you know, I will always be sus suspicious about the whole activity in general. Okay? If Andre, Andre was prone to getting infections, whether it was a diaper rash or anything related to his private parts, then yeah, maybe I could understand it. But he never had that issue until he showed up into foster care. Okay? And once it was determined that there was an issue, you know, they took it to a whole new level, which at the end of the day didn't solve no freaking problems, and if anything, may have created bigger problems for Andre when he's a man. Because what happens is, is when boys grow up, right, they find their own way with their own private parts, and... um you know, they just find their own way. They don't need other people to help them with that when they're toddlers or infants or anything like that. So I don't consider that to be medicine, people. I don't. I just don't. Okay? Although, they'll just say, well, the doctor, and, and, and you know, they'll just say the doctor prescribed it. Because I think I did bring it up to them at some point when I found out uh, somehow, some way. And they said it was prescribed by the doctor, so therefore it made it okay. Well, no, it wasn't okay. So, all right. And then, when I got Andre back, because when they took him for the first six months, he wouldn't talk, wouldn't say anything, wouldn't even try. Stopped eating, right? Because he wanted to be at home with his family, with his aunts, his mom, his grandma, his Uncle John, right? You know what I'm saying? Uncle Marcane. Right? He wanted to be with his family, so he stopped eating, stopped talking. They got scared. They started to bum rush me through the lawyer to go see Andre. Because when they took him, I refused to see him. They wanted me to go see him, and I said no. Because first of all, children don't have a concept of time. Okay? And if you're going in and out, in and out of their life, and they want to be with you, and you're going in and out, it builds psychological issues every time you turn away. And then I guess those issues lead into that uh, attachment disorder, right? Which to which I didn't want to feed into. So I felt that if I just stayed away, because it was enough that the girls were going to see him and Sierra was seeing him, <coughs> you know, I didn't want to traumatize him anymore. And then they canceled all the appointments on Sierra. Then they canceled all their appointments with the girls. Got that on video, people. Right? And then, you know, time went by. Andre wasn't eating. Andre wasn't talking. Right? You know what I'm saying? And then they, they, they started pressuring my lawyer to talk to me to go see Andre because in the way he explained it was, if I don't start seeing Andre when I'm in front of a judge, the judge will make the, will take that as I'm not wanting to be involved with Andre, right? Where it was the complete opposite. I didn't want to traumatize Andre any more than he was traumatized, okay? So, but based on what my lawyer said, I said, okay, fine. So they started booking me in appointments, okay, to visit with him, all right? So we did that. Eventually, I got Andre back, right? I, eventually, I got him back, okay? What I'm trying to tell you, though, is... When I did get him back, okay, we already know about his private parts, what I discovered, right? And then what I did get back, like when he did get back, right, they, they, they wanted me to uh, take him to the Child Development Center is where I take Amari for speech therapy, okay? Because, he, you know, he shut down, right? I said, okay, fine, whatever. So... I take Andre, and they had me with some individual, you notice how I said that, right? With some individual who, in my opinion, was a transvestite. That's it. Okay, and as this individual was doing whatever they were doing, they started reading a book to Andre that promoted that neutral identity where if you look at a picture you can't tell if it's a boy or a girl because of the way that cartoon image of a quote unquote human was drawn out. And then 
as this individual is reading to Andre, showing him these pictures, asking him if it's a boy or girl. We're talking like a three three year old, right? Right? Trying to distinguish between a boy and a girl when clearly I can't even distinguish as right? To confuse him. To confuse him, people. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. So, you know, I get home and you know, and he really can't distinguish between a boy or a girl He, he at, at that age. And normally three-year-olds, four-year-olds can start to distinguish, right? No, not Andre, because he was being programmed, people, through this very center where I take Amari. They were programming him to be... Andre to be confused between boy and girl and it took me a long time to get Andre to distinguish the difference between a boy and a girl just based on those few experiences that he had when he was in foster care because I only went to one or two of those um, story time because that's basically what it was about she just had him do a couple of little things and then went on to read the book to further reinforce that he couldn't tell the difference between a boy and a girl because it was almost impossible unless of course you were old enough to comprehend what the story was about. Mindfuckery, right? On a toddler. But you can't live in the past. You can't hold grudges. Some things you just have to let go. So I've tried to let it go all these years, people. Okay, I don't dwell on it. You watch my videos. Once in a while, I'll bring it up as a reference point, like I am right now. But it's not anything that I harp on about like I do with there is no statute of limitation when it comes to murder. Right? So anyway, that I'll harp on. Andre, well, no, it's a point of reference. So, th so that, that's, my, that's my initial introduction to the facility that I now find myself being forced to be participating with because it falls under some sort of medical guideline in relation to Amari's injuries to which whenever I come into contact with people I remind them that nobody wants to acknowledge Amari was injured anyway I'm there yesterday for this appointment and we're in the room. This is the feeding team because I'm trying to encourage these teams to book together so we can go back to back. Otherwise, you know, it just gets to be obnoxious and too much. So anyway, okay. <coughs> and the first thing they want to do is take off all his clothes. Now I had already discussed this with Tisha when I put two and two together that from this appointment to that appointment to that appointment within all these appointments these individuals as a group are taking off Amari's clothes and I've even mentioned it in my videos to which I think with his age now it's getting to be inappropriate. I can compensate for it when they're little Right? You know, in terms of like an infant or maybe even a toddler. But he's five years old now, people. And so anyway, I'm like, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, you know, that needs to stop. Well, you have to. And I'm like, well, what do you, what, where is it medically that I have to do this? Please explain it to me. So now I'm sitting in a room with three women, right? Another one comes in because clearly there's a debate going on now, right? So now there's four of them against one, right? Me. Next thing you know, the speech the speech therapist comes in. I didn't even have an appointment with the speech therapist people, but she showed up in there, right? So now there's like five women in there. Then then she's kind of like a social worker where she helps with the paperwork and you know and da, 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 and she comes in. So now I've got this big band of group of women, right? All you know, just putting in their whatever with the main one. 
the main one, to which makes me think that maybe I'm dealing with another transvestite. Like, seriously, I, I just, I'm going to be point blank period about it, people. I don't feel like this individual is, quote unquote, a true woman. And if she is, well, then she found, she lost her way, okay? Because, because of the agenda, the agenda, right? You see, this is the thing. Tell me, I said, he's five years old, right? He, you know, he doesn't need to be having his clothes taken off from group to group. So the, the one in charge, the one that I think might be a transvestite, right? Supposedly a pediatrician on site or something, okay? Is, well, um, you, you, she, she, she just, well, you know, we, we do it. We're, we're just trying to help you. Well, that's not help, okay? We have to know exactly how much he weighs, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, yeah, but the pediatrician just weighed him, right, on October 11th. So why does he need, it again, to have all his clothes taken off, um, you, right? With a group of women or whoever, it doesn't matter. It's enough he went through with the pediatrician and whoever was in the room with the pediatrician. Not even two weeks later, you're wanting to do it again. But for what purpose? Where is the medical value in that? That's what I asked. Where is the medical value? Why can't you, you know? Uh, and then she go, oh, well, um, I don't know. Like, it happened. But I, I'm so frustrated, people. Then, 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 then this individual says, because he had a, I, I put on a cotton shirt. A cotton shirt, right? Because I reminded her that there is no medical necessity or value in taking off his shirt or his diaper especially when he was just weighed less than two weeks ago right then she got cocky with me and asked me if it was okay if I took off his hoodie I said, well, obviously, that's just an asinine question. I'm not saying you can't, you know, he has to have everything on. But, you know, there is no reason to be uh, completely stripping him down. And then they, this individual, right, made the insinuation that I was insinuating that somebody, if not all, were pedophiles in that group. And I'm like, no, that's not, exa that's not, that's not what I'm trying to insinuate. Right? Do you see the combat that was going on? I'm like, no, that's not what I'm trying to insinuate. You know, it didn't even cross my mind. It's the fact that Amari is five years old, and he has a sense of privacy and dignity, and it's completely unnecessary because there is no real medical value in terms of he's thriving, he's growing, he's alert, he's strong, he's communicative. Like, what are you looking for? Why are you always trying to be looking for the negative things and making it making me feel like that I'm not, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing in terms of clearly he's growing. So where is the need to take off a 30 gram shirt just to get the right weight? When in fact the weight scale itself could be compromised. They can't guarantee to me that their weight scales aren't compromised. Right? They, they ignore that his body mass is lightweight compared to somebody else's body mass. And I use Tisha as an example, right? Where, you know, her body mass is, is solid, right? So if you pick up two kids, Shemay, lightweight, versus Tisha with her solid body mass at age two or three or four, Shemay's body mass is always going to feel the same because it's, it's, it's just put together different. They don't acknowledge that. So, they said they wanted to keep taking his clothes off for 18 years. I said, that's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. He doesn't need to be going to a feeding team for 18 fucking years having strange people taking off his clothes two times a year. Two times a year, people. Because, okay, after all that kahuffle, and they settled for the um, cotton shirt and a diaper. Right? Then, uh... We're talking about the food. 
I explained to him about his pickiness and what I'm thinking it might be. But they were okay with the fact that he's drinking these drinks, which is bringing in about, if I give him four a day, that's bringing in about 1,500 calories. So they're copacetic with that, although I told him that, you know, I'm trying to figure out a way where I can, um, what do you call it? make my own and then I asked him if it had bug flour in it or any kind of bug protein or anything because you know and they said well we don't know and I, you look it up and I'm like well no you should know right you should know what you're giving me right to give to him especially in this day and age with what our governments are trying to do to us by making us eat bug flour and all this other crap right said so that's your responsibility to know what's inside of them right so you know but we just kind of moved on from there right so they expect me to look at every ingredient to figure out what's inside these drinks okay <clears throat> and then um, so the worst parts over now he's been weighed oh yeah and then they wanted me to let him watch how he sucked a bottle Right, because I told him since since he started getting picky with everything, right? You know, with either the medicine being increased, or maybe he's not going through a growing spurt, or maybe he's just getting too comfortable with these drinks, and this is why he wants things pureed, or whether it's because he's full because of these drinks, because you know, all he requires is fifteen hundred calories versus 2,900 calories, right? Because you have to remember, they wanted me to give him 2,900 calories. Yeah, okay. You know, maybe just with his body body mass and, you know, his metabolism, this, you know, he's not hungry. I mean, there's, there's different reasons why he could be doing what he's doing. So, anyway, I'm thinking everything's done now, right? And then they're asking me to bring him in again, and oh yeah, because the, they let me finish the the bottle part. I'm like, well, why do you need to see him watch watch him drink? A they're asking me questions like this: If you give him a bottle, how long does it take for him to drink it? And I'm like, well, first thing, I guess it really depends on what I'm giving him, and at what time I'm giving it to him too. You know, right? I've seen him on days I give him water, no problem, he drinks his water. Other days he's just splashing and playing with it. Right? Same thing is true with those drinks. There's times I give him the bottle and he just wants to drink his bottle and be done with it. There's other times he'll just play or whatever and not necessarily drink it all. Okay? Or any of it for that matter. There's been a few times he's just playing with it. So, you know. And then same thing with juice. And I told him, like, that's that question is, like, impractical because there is no real answer for it. Oh, well, we have to watch him suck on a bottle. And I'm like, well, obviously he sucks on a bottle. There's no problem with that. Never has been, right? But they insisted that I let them watch him suck on a bottle. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, okay, so after all that, then I'm like, okay, we're done now. They're like, well, no, you need to come back in, in January. I said, in January... You know, like, that's not even, what, two, three months from now, right? So we're in October, November, December. They want me to bring him back in two and a half months? For what, people? For what? You know why? I said, why? Why do you need me back here in two and a half months? Oh, because we have to, um, because they got me on this at-home program. Amari was injured at the time of his birth so he could be signed into that at-home program with that newly improved, funded, at the Children's Hospital research study. Okay? And because I'm in that at-home program that provides diapers for Amari and these drinks and PEG if I need it and vitamin D and I guess transportation if I need it to the Children's Hospital to which I have to fill out a form each and every time that happens. And all these other services that I'm expected to participate in. That I'm expected to participate in. Okay? Well, I guess it requires every six months to do that assessment to put in a new referral. And I'm like, oh, okay. 
so it's the big, and I said this with all these women standing around. I said, oh, so it's the big six, 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 six. Right? Routine. They knew exactly what I was insinuating. Okay, people? So anyway, got over that. Now we're going for this for the leg thing. Okay. That one went a little smoother. However, I don't know. That woman that was doing that, she uh, laid Amari down. And, and that's what I told that other group of women with the feeding team. And like I said, all of a sudden the speech therapist showed up. And just, <laughs> of course, they called in the pediatrician, on site pediatrician, called in the hounds, right? You know, because, you know, grandma doesn't want to undress her grandson. Right, you know, right, right, to, to, to what? Save yourself five grams in fabric? Like, give it a break, man. You know, he's five years old. It, oh, if he was sick or something, really sick, not doing really well, then I could maybe see it. But this, this is, this is, this, there is, oh. I have to do something about this, people. I don't, I know if I write a letter to the government, to the Minister of Health, it's going to be like one ear and out the other, like I've done any other letter when it relates to my family. Right? I already showed you that. Okay? If I take it to court, we know it's just going to go in one ear and out the other because everybody's bought and paid for so they can keep their status quo and God knows what they do. Like I say, like what happened to Andre? How did that, out of 28 months when we had him, we never had that issue. As soon as he's in foster care, all of a sudden, in my mind, he's being molested for 15 months until he finally got home and Grandma said, no more, no, that's it, I'm not touching it. Okay, you touch it, it's yours, it belongs to you. Okay, and not, not some fucking out-of-nowhere caregiver that is following the advice of the doctor. And that's why I said, like, you're asking me to take off his clothes. I go to the hip doctor. They're asking me to take off his clothes. Go take him to the pediatrician. He's asking to take off Mari's clothes, right? Right? Where is it in the medical... How is it medically... Imp Where is the medical procedure in doing that to a little boy who is fully aware of his environment, right, can understand pain, can understand whatever, right, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, right, like, would you want to go to a big open whatever with strangers, you know, take, I, I told him about the phobia with this, how they, you know, from one group to the other group that he developed a phobia where I couldn't even take off his shirt without playing the hand game and I couldn't even put on a shirt without playing the hand game and I had to do it for months and months and months and months just to break the phobia that those people created by taking off his clothes all the time from group to group to group as everybody's saying in their head or when put on a you know a debate oh what are you accusing us of being pedophiles well no I'm not accusing you of being pedophiles what I'm saying is Amari has should have a sense of privacy. Right? You go to the doctor, this, 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 with, let other people take off your clothes, then put you some, do whatever they do, and they can put your clothes back on, and they can hurt you. You see, and that's the thing. When he went in for um, his splints, a different woman uh, laid him on his stomach on a table, did something. Now he got hurt. That was a hurt cry. Okay? I know a hurt cry in Amari. And he doesn't cry like that. Really, he doesn't. Okay? You know? I know his fear cry, like if, if you know, when he had his phobias going into the bathroom, you know, sometimes he will just, whatever, but not very often, just, eh, right, but this was, he, she did something, she did something, and she did it when I wasn't looking, people, and she did it fast, and then she tried to play it off like, 
oh, well, you know, he's just overstimulated because, you know, we had a rough patch with the feeding team and, you know, and he, he's in tune with my emotions and he's just reacting and, you know, now, you know, he's being overstimulated and, you know, and blah, he's not in his, in his neutral environment and I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever, like, did you do something? No, 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 you know, oh, and I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. Because he didn't cry on for too long. The point is, is he did cry out suddenly, and he did cry for a bit. When I talked to Tish about it, I asked her about that, if it's ever happened to her when she takes them. She just pointed out that, you know, sometimes they, they move this, they move that to see what the tone is like, and blah, and blah, and blah. Okay, so whatever. I let it slide people, and then we just went on with basically the splint. They ended up giving me um, something that belonged to another child that can straighten out the whole leg, but obviously it doesn't help with the ankle, but they said if he copes with this, well, that's not, there, there's no bar in the middle of it, right? You know, if he can tolerate just having whatever that I've got now, <clears throat> and if he doesn't seem to mind it, we, they can make a new one with also the, the leg sprint, but at the end of the day we know it's big and bulky and so I told her I wanted to do something in leather and she said oh that's you know blah and then the other worker came in and the subject of leather came up and apparently they used to use leather back in the day and uh, the problem with leather leather is that you know there's it doesn't stand up with the wear and tear as much we already knew that and so anyway, they did kind of show an interest in what I'm thinking, right? So I really need to make that prototype because I asked her if once I get the prototype done, if there's something that maybe she could do for me in terms of just a little bit of that reinforcement with the plastic ver and, and versus, you know, and she says, well, you doing something for the leg and hip? And I said, yeah, like with the leather, that's what I want to do, but... So anyway, I, I kind of got a sense that they're interested in what I want to do. And the part, like, for the, the feet, <clears throat> the ankle bracelets, <clears throat> there's a little something there that goes for arch. And um, that is becoming hard to find. So they're starting to experience... I don't know to what degree, but uh, supply chain issues when it comes to making these prosthesis, right? The, right, with the uh, arch part being one of those items. So, you know, whether it's temporary or whether it's the signs of things to come, you know, you need to pay attention, right? So, yeah, I was like... I don't know, people. I shouldn't have to fight for for stuff like that. Like, I really shouldn't. Like, I, you know, it wasn't that we were fighting, but definitely it was not anything I want to do. And I told him, like, you know, if I was a person that had Munchhauser syndrome and liked the attention of people like you, <laughs> you know, I'd be in my glory, right? Amari would always be sick in there. But I don't have that issue, people. Right? So, I don't even want to be there. And I told him that. I told him that's why I send in Tisha. Because she gets along with everybody for the most part. Right? Where with me, you know, it's not like they don't know. Because, you know, every now and then I show up and I tell them what I want or what I think or whatever right you know but like how do I protect Amari see the point of all that is how do I protect Amari from this overreach of so called health care okay why is Amari being forced into health care when he's not even really sick he's injured his body and brain were injured this isn't a sickness, people. This is something that people can hold against the family 
or the caregiver, depending on the caregiver, right? Because obviously some play into it and enjoy it, like what they did with Andre, right? The caregiver didn't question what the doctor said. The caregiver, to me, sounds like it was, she, that individual is more than willing to follow doctor's advice. And for what purpose? To quite possibly injure Andre for the rest of his life because underneath his foreskin it was so stretched out at too young of an age that it probably created permanent damage when it comes to those nerves to which nobody will ever take any kind of responsibility for including the province of the uh, British Columbia of Canada government via through the Attorney General Office and the Public Safety Solicitor uh, office. They don't care if Andre got injured as a toddler. They don't, people. And they don't care if Amari gets traumatized for the next 18 years of his life with strangers constantly wanting, wanting to weigh him in the nude. And the bigger he gets, the harder it's going to get to undress him, which is going to traumatize him even more when it's unnecessarily unnecessary because clearly the boy is growing. Now he's in a man. What? He just went from a boy to a man? No, it's because he's growing. But they act like he doesn't grow or grow to their liking. And that's why they want to get it right down to the right, to the, to, to, to a gram. Because bullshit. Weigh his clothes before he goes. I, I got a weight scale. You've seen that. I'll come in with the bag. No. I'll weigh his scale. I'll weigh his clothes, people. I'll weigh his clothes before I put it on him. And then when I take him, or I give him to Tisha to take, I'll say, this is shirt weighs this many grams, his diaper weighs this many grams, and his socks weigh, or are you wanting me to take off his socks too so his feet can fucking freeze? Sorry, boo-boo freeze. You know, big open fucking room, who knows what the temperature is in it at the time, and they want to keep him undressed for 20 minutes as they fiddle at putting his clothes on and off, taking them off and then p fiddling to put them back on after they move him around to get him on a weight scale, to move him around to get him dressed, to, and then say he wasn't traumatized. Tell me how that's medicine, people. How is that medicine, people? That's not medicine. And that's what I told that individual to whom I'm starting to think is a freaking transvestite. And it bothers me. Because it brings me back to the time when I was looking at another transvestite trying to confuse my other grandson as to what a boy was or a girl was. And they were doing it on purpose, people. And that's the point. I feel like I'm in a group of fucking social workers that everybody wants to be top dog. Who's the biggest and baddest and meanest fucking social worker in the group? Because they kind of act like that. Looking for something to just, what, destroy everything? Because at the end of the day, that's basically what they do. I don't know how I'm going to protect Amari from this when I'm dead, people. I don't. I'm thinking to phone up Shemay's dad in Tacoma. I got to find his number. He was willing to pay for Shemay to go to college. He was willing to buy a car for Shemay. He should be willing to help get a lawyer for Amari, being that Judge Ross wants a lawyer to represent Amari. Because that's what Amari needs. Only thing is, I know he won't do it. But he might. He might. So I'm going to see if I can find him and ask him. Doesn't hurt to ask. And I can get Amari on a different fucking schedule and get off that at-home program. 
because it stems from that at home program. I'm not saying I'm not wouldn't you know use public services, but some of this stuff that they're doing, seriously, people, it's wrong. Okay. Because the way things are going, I don't know. I mean, I can't predict the future, but... I just like the audacity of these people. I said to that individual, you go take off your clothes for each and every appointment that you go for and let people do whatever, a whole band of them whatever and then come back and tell me how you feel like I had to take it there to that freaking level right uh, it, right if it's wrong for them how is it right for Amari it's not what are you looking for child abuse are you looking for fucking bruises is that it that's what it's making me think. And if that's the case, why do I have them? If you think that. Right? I don't know. So we'll see. And the hip doctor they know too, I don't like him having all his clothes taken off. So what I should do really then in this situation to alleviate any further stress is weigh whatever it is that I'm going to put on him. So when they do start undressing him for whatever reason, right, his shirt can basically stay on, his socks can stay on, he can take, his diaper can stay on unless it's, you know, absolutely necessary for whatever reason. Check his hips or whatever. That's okay. That's different, right? You know. And only certain people would be doing that. Feeding teams don't check children's hips. And just have it written down before he goes. Yeah. And they can factor that out of the weight that he's coming in on. But again, I don't necessarily trust their weight scales. I don't, because they're all electronic. They can manipulate those any which way they want. Right? So... You know what was cute with Amari? I was so proud of him. Yeah, I was so proud of him. When they were doing his ankle bracelet, he didn't like it. Right? Especially his right foot. <clears throat> and uh, they had to put on something. Like they put the plastic on warm. So when it hits the skin... You know, it could be uh, traumatizing. Not so much, I don't want to say painful, but more just the shock of like that, right? And he cried out a little bit and was fussy with it and didn't like it. And then they started singing Wheels on the Bus. Then he calmed down, right? And then they took off whatever it was that they were trying to make. And you know what he did, people? I was so proud of him. He chewed them out. <laughs> he chewed them out. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> he was annoyed. He told that to those women that were doing that to his feet. <laughs> and I, I pointed it out to them. I said, you know he's giving you shit, right? You can hear it, right? <laughs> I said, he takes after his grandma. 
So, ideally, I'd like to have, I have to go back and get these splinters later, right? In about three weeks or so. Ideally, it would be great if I could just get that prototype made. I got so much yard work, though, people, you don't know. And when I'm, and it's going to start raining, I get tired, man. Especially if I'm putting in a nine, ten hour a day, you know. <laughs> and it's going to be very hard to be working on it. So, whatever. Just one day at a time. I like the idea that they were kind of showing an interest with the fact that there is the possibility that I could work with leather and make something that would even include the hip, right? Because they used to do it like that. Not anymore, though. So, but with things disappearing, where they are finding it hard to get parts for the things that they make, you know, they might have to resort back to that kind of stuff one day. You never know with the way the world is going. So yeah, that's that was my experience yesterday with them. <coughs> right, in terms of, you know, setting boundaries when it comes to, uh, I don't know, this taking off of clothes. And, you know, why should I have to go every six months? And that's another thing. I'm not just getting every six months a referral for the feeding team, but it's for the die eye doctor the hip doctor now they want to bring in the neurologist it's they got me on going to some sunny hill program with physiotherapist then it's the freaking speech therapist then it's the uh, you know they're asking me you know when was the last time he had his ears checked i said well clearly he can hear they go yeah clearly he can okay like right like when does it quit people when can he just not be a normal little boy even though he'll never really be normal right you know 18 years of being, I don't know, manhandled by strangers. And then I reminded them that after he loses his cute and cuddly and his, they all know, we all know, that people with disabilities like Amari get lost in the fray and they basically, basically become insignificant and nobody in the great grand scheme of things really cares about them. So much so that the government, federal and provincial, have now brought in legislation to help kill them and call it legal because they were doing it through assisted suicide. So they can save themselves that financial burden of looking after an adult like Amari. This is where Amari needs a lawyer. Seriously. So I'm going to see... Of his dad, his grandpa. Grandpa? Yeah, he'd be a grandpa. If he can help. That's a lot to ask. Right? So I don't know. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do it by myself. And then, then they'll forever hold it against me. Saying that I compromised... The, Amari's future and made it impossible for a real lawyer to come up behind me and file a lawsuit because I already corrupted it with mine. Yeah, okay, motherfucker, fuck off. Fuck off. Seriously, fuck off. Anyway. So... Now I'm going to shred these. I have one more bag to go. If my landlady doesn't come pick it up, I will be doing them myself because they're coming to the end of their time. Mm -hmm. uh, to which I don't think she's too interested in turnips right now. She didn't come by, so that's okay. They're not, they're not optimal. But they work for me. Yeah. So I'm going to just leave this video as is and upload it because it's just me rambling on about shit. But, you know, if I try and change it, put boundaries, you know, whatever, 
I become the villain, which puts me more at risk to being attacked. I reminded them how, you know, because they tried to say Amari was having seizures. I said, no, he had one. And then I reminded them how, uh, you know, the paramedic got into that pissing contest with me as to how Amari got injured, you know, and ended up calling MCFD on me and all this other crap, right? You know? Like, there's nothing, it's so stressful having a disabled child because you're not just dealing with one or two people that hold that against you because in their minds they seem to think that they can do a better job than you and be up on the ball with it 24 fucking 7 like superhuman beings, okay? Until you walk the walk and actually just do it, like, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So you take those one or two people and you multiply it by a group after group after group after group, basically with the same mentality, with the government patting them on the fucking back and saying, yeah, you, by any means necessary, you know, like, it, it gets, it gets to be, um, like, you don't have a life, like, it's, like, you just, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I felt so many fucking hammers over me. You know, like a mallet or just, just all these people, you know, just ready to, right? You know, it's like being in that sandbox. It's like being in that sandbox with these other kids that for whatever reason, right, the leader of the pack, right? You know, right, right? And they're little followers and, you know, and, right? It's, it's oh my Lord. It was this, it's just the same crap. I'm arguing to keep my grandson's clothes on at age five years old so that he won't be exploited when he's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I won't even be alive by then. Who's going to protect him then, people? What, he's going to go five times a year, have a bunch of strangers taken off of his clothes at 15 years old, and they're all going to act like it's fucking normal because that's what the uh, province of British Columbia healthcare system deems as normal? There's nothing normal about that. And then say, well, we're just trying to make sure that he's growing. Yeah, okay. How many years have I been listening to that for? Fifteen? Clearly he's growing. Oh, he's stronger now. You don't like that. Is that it? Maybe that's what it is. Who knows? Gotta break his spirit, right? You know? Who knows? It doesn't take much to hurt them. All you have to do is just turn your head and all of a sudden they're hollering and screaming as if they're in pain. What did you do? I didn't do anything. He's reacting to his environment because he's a little stressed out. Yeah, okay. Why? May, why? Because Nana was being a mean Nana. They were trying to fight for, uh, so that, you know, he wouldn't have his clothes taken off him. Sit in a fucking cold room for 15 minutes while they figure out if the scale is working properly. Don't say it doesn't happen. Because it does. That's not child abuse? Of course not. That's medical procedure. Just so they can get it down to the gram as to how much he weighs. As they're insinuating that you're doing something wrong. And that's how they're just trying to help you. Well, no. That's how they justify doing what they, they are doing. And when you call them on it, that's when they gaslight you and guilt trip you and say, But we're just trying to help. Okay, you're trying to help, but yet you're telling me it's mandated, which is not help. When you look outside the box and you start having to deal with freaking quote-unquote, I guess you could say, phobias that could materialize at any moment after a visit. Not to mention the psychological... Um, rewriting of the, 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 the child's self-esteem. Are they waiting for the day when he becomes aware that he's naked? Or are they just assuming that he'll never be aware and that whatever they do to him won't matter? Because he's just a disabled, retarded child anyway. But you see, Amari showed them that he's not as stupid as they think he is because 
when they took off that leg brace and that woman was down there and he he chewed her out people he chewed her out and I felt like a proud papa <laughs> only I'm a nana right if I would have been a dad I would have been proud but I'm a nana and I'm like yeah you see he's chewing you out he's letting you know right he's more aware than you think takes after his nana the only thing is he'll never be able to walk like his nana talk like his nana nothing and he's gonna like I said he's at the mercy of what BC healthcare system yeah who is just trying to help yeah okay no they got me on this six 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 month hamster wheel that's where they got me.